The Federal Reserve on Wednesday raised its benchmark interest rates to its highest level in 15 years, indicating that the fight against inflation is not over yet. Despite some promising signs lately, keeping with expectations, the rate-setting Federal Open Market Committee voted to boost the overnight borrowing rate half a percentage point, taking it to a target range between four and a quarter to four and a half. The interest broke a string of four straight quarters, three-quarter hikes, uh, three-quarter point hikes, the most aggressive policy moves ever since 1980, along with the increase, came an indication that officials expect to keep rates higher through next year and no reductions until 2024. That's not good news for those involved in real estate and loans. The expected terminal rate or point where officials expect to end the rate hikes was put at 5.1. Tom, thoughts on this rate hike and any other data you have on what's going on in the market? Well, we can start right now with the uh, rate. And so what everybody's hearing about inflation, oh, wow, you know, 7.1 instead of 7.3. That doesn't mean prices are falling. They're just not rising as quickly as they were a minute ago. So there's still pressure on the American consumer. But yesterday, we'll talk about the stock market first. So the consumer, you see CPI, consumer price index, there was some positive news on that, and it created a market rally. And by the way, there were programmatic trades that were going on. Did you see this, yep, Pat? Yep, That minutes before the CPI data came out, somebody knew, and they were putting out programmatic trades. The market had a rally based on some positive news on consumer pricing. But then Powell goes to the microphone and says, well, it's a half point now, and there's going to be another half point in, at least in uh, February, and we're going to keep doing this until we can get inflation down to 2%. And then that was a downer, right? So the cop showed up at the keg party, and now the, the market came down. So that's what was the market was reacting to. But what it was interesting um, I, that I saw about <clears throat> the whole thing on inflation was right now, gas is really the thing that was driving inflation calculation. And a lot of people were critical of Biden opened the Strategic Petroleum yep, yep. Reserve. So what he did, he put more supply out, cheap supply. And so the price of gas is going down. Now, it's a negative thing that he's using the strategic reserve to do that, but it's a positive thing right now for people that are commuting to work or paying less for gas. That's a positive thing. But there's nothing else on there that was really going down. As a matter of fact, services, including public transportation, are now up 25% year to date, which was pretty heavy. So that's what was the market reaction yesterday. But underneath it, Pat, Inflation is still tough on Americans. By, by the way, this, this story Fox News says, five reasons why we, U.S. could lead into, head into recession in March. This is a bank of, according to Bank of America. Number one, the yield curve is the most inverted since October of 81. Okay, they're talking about the 10-year U.S. Treasury re yield, currently about 80 basis points below the yield of the two-year U.S. Treasury. So they're concerned about that. Number two, oil is down 40% in six months despite various bullish supply factors, including China reopening its economy, the Russian oil price cap, an empty U.S. strategic petroleum reserve, and yep. OPEC remaining supply constraint. Number three, bank stocks are down 10% in just four days. That's concerning. ISM manufacturing new orders are down three straight months during the current period of high innovations. Uh, altogether, this serves as a potential signal that businesses are anticipating or already expect experiencing a slowdown in customer orders. And last but not least, the U.S. home sales index is down 37% year over year, while home prices in Sweden, New Zealand, Canada, and Sydney, Australia are down 13%, 11%, 10%, 5% respectively. Overall, the housing market, both in the U.S. and abroad, is slowing down, and that can, be, that can have a negative wealth effect and hurt consumer spending. Adam. Well, I, more, I have a question for you, Pat, to kind of circle back to what we just talked about with um, the raising of the interest rates. I think when it comes to politics, I, I think we're all very focused on who the president is, who's the vice president, who's like in the Senate. Who like, But is there anybody more influential than the chairman of the Fed? Like, is Jerome Powell the most influential person in America today, right? Like, if you go down the list, whether it's Jerome Powell, go down the list, and who was before that? Janet Yellen, then you had Bernanke, then you had Greenspan, you had Volcker. Like, these are not household names to most people. I guarantee you, if you go around to most Americans and be like, who's this? Picture of Jerome Powell. They'll be like, I don't, I don't know that dude. Picture of Janet Yellen. Like, like uh, my grand it looks like my yeah. grandma. I, like, Nana. these are not household names, but these are the actual people 
who are running the country. Like we, uh, we Trump, it's Biden, it's Obama, it's this person, it's McConnell. It's like we get it. These are the people, but behind the scenes, these are the people that affect your actual money, your savings rates, your debt, how much you're paying on interest rates, credit cards, college loans, all that kind of stuff. So, um, you, you know, you know, it's, it's crazy. You're saying this. This is why for me. Uh, uh, I went and I was talking about, I tweeted this out the other day. The last time I listened to the radio was 2002. I haven't listened to the radio since 2002. You know this because my music stops at yeah. 2002. I know like, nothing after 02. Right? <laughs> you know up I mean, until about I, like Ja Rule and Nelly I, I and know then the, and nothing. It falls off. That yeah. leave happened and When I <laughs> tell you literally, this weekend we were playing spades uh, at uh, what do you call it? One of the events, parties at the time. I don't know where we were at. We were at uh, Manashina Sapala's. Uh, a place in Fort Lauderdale. I'm playing spades against Swazo from New Orleans. Whooped his yeah. ass when he was teamed up with <laughs> You hear that, Hansel, Swazo? Yeah. Chicago, you hear that, yeah. buddy? Okay. From uh, Memphis. But until Jamie Musgrove showed up, was like she really had, she knew how to do She never made a mistake. But anyways, two Armenians yeah. whooped on a bunch of guys from New Orleans, Chicago, Memphis. It was awesome. But they were playing hip-hop. You know, they're playing all this stuff. And, you know, I'm talking to the guys. So, so tell me. Who are the top five uh, best rappers right now? And this guy says, "Well, Little Baby, number one." And I'm like, Ooh. and he plays Little Baby. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm not. Sorry. I, I'm not. I'm not. You don't I'm know about the bop. You don't no, know about bop. I'm good. No, I can't. Here's oh, that's the point. The baby. There's a little baby and the baby. I, like, in O2, I yeah. stopped listening to the radio. But yeah. then what happened was I realized the I'm not going to follow anything with politics. I'm not going to follow anything with the economy. I'm just going to mind my own business, read my books. That worked out because my mindset got tighter. But then as you get bigger and bigger with your business, it is very, very important to follow what's going on in the news. Now, here's a problem. A lot of people will say, well, dude, I don't know. Who do I follow? I don't trust CNN. I don't trust Fox. I'll let you, you know, all these people that say they don't trust this. I will tell you if there is, and Tom, you know, I think you would vouch for this as well. If there is someone you ought to subscribe, this is not a sponsorship. We're not making money off of this. Mm -hmm. They don't send us nothing. Go subscribe to Wall Street Journal and read it every day, okay? Yeah. I think the Wall Street Journal, if there's anything they do, they're the most fairest ones that will call out shit on the left and the right and the middle. I think they're straight up. Uh, so my suggestion is do follow a publication that you do trust, and I would say uh, I put Wall Street Journal on the first I, one. There. I completely agree with you. And to go back to Adam's point, the president sets policy in a general sense, and he is very, very instrumental in a lot of the programs that come out. But you're correct about the Fed the operating independent of the president. You can't really control him. But there's really two people that control the economy. One is the chairman of the Fed, and the other is the U.S. Secretary of Treasury, because that's where all the tax planning comes. So the president very much controls tax and treasury. Goes to the treasury, and he says, listen, this is what we're going to do on taxes. This is what we're going to do. We're going to cut taxes. We're going to raise taxes. We're going to do tariffs. And so the Secretary of Treasury on the left and then Jerome Powell on the right yeah. and the president in the middle, those are the three that will impact the economy. But you're right. The Fed very much has a mind of its own, whereas on the other side, the president has control mm. of tax through the secretary. So, with of that Treasury. being said, do I, I might need to recant my statement of Jerome Powell being the most influential, powerful person in America. Maybe it is Janet Yellen because she's had both positions in the last few years. You know, you she was the chairman of the Fed for years, exactly. and now she is the... Uh, Secretary of the Treasury. So is Janet Yellen the most powerful person in America? You know, not on the cover no. of Vogue anytime soon, but she's going to be on the cover of Time Magazine and other things because she swings a lot of, she's got a lot of weight. You're saying she's not hot enough? Is that why she's not going to be on the Shots cover of Vogue? Fired, she, damn, dude. Wrong? I don't know, Tom. How would you disrespect I know a lot Janet of Yellen? friends from the she... army who are into that. What do you <laughs> think? Dude, she looks like she's going to be the new Harry Potter movie. No, no, take yeah. a look at that. Take a look at that. Is that Buddy Hackett? Yeah. Yeah. Tom, nobody knows who Buddy Hackett yeah, is. We well, appreciate yeah, we that dad two. joke. But, but here's the question. Yeah. I, I actually want I want to go do that. Do you know who Buddy Hackett is? No. no, none of What? Them, no. I do? No, stop it. No. Buddy no, Hackett? Stop it. Stop You know that guy. Tom's telling jokes from 1960, and he's like, come on, guys, it's good, right? No, no, no. no nobody knows Buddy Hackett. But here, Take uh, off the glasses, that, that Rob. That actually is pretty similar. Get him one without the glasses. <laughs> but here's my question. We're having this debate over whether Janet Yellen or Jerome Powell, who's yeah. the most influential... Mm -hmm. To the average American, like, they don't know who that lady... Like, swear to God, be true. Uh, Vinny, I, did you know who that lady was? I'm going to be dead serious. Yes. I knew she had something to do with finance, but I don't memorize her you, name. Like, if I showed you a picture of her, would I, you know who she is? Be real. I would, know, I would know that she's in government, but I didn't know... I didn't know. Oh, yeah. Like, the Powell guy? I know he's a weird guy with glasses, right? No, that's Fauci. No, okay. no. But, yeah. <laughs> They're all weird. But yeah, but th this is my point, is that we yeah. get so obsessed with, fucking Trump, Biden, he's yeah, an idiot, yeah. Trump's like... 
these are the people that are actually affecting your money. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for And sure. it'd probably be good to just know their name. So with all the craziness taking place, I believe Future Looks Bright. If you believe Future Looks Bright, get your latest Future Looks Bright hat of value tainment. It says Future Looks Bright here. Future Looks Bright here. We got them in white. We got them in black. We got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan bought one. Then he bought three. Then when those three people weren't in the office, they had to order 58 of them because people wanted the Future Looks Bright hat, especially during times like this because ain't nobody saying Future Looks Bright. To order your Future Looks Bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.